Hello there, hope everyone is well and welcome to today's art lesson. And all we're going to need for this today is a pencil and a rubber. So what is perspective? Perspective is where things appear to be getting smaller as they get further away. This creates a sense of depth or distance or space. So for example, if I hold this rubber, it might be out of focus, but the rubber quite close to the screen, it looks quite big, but as it gets further away, it appears smaller. So that is what we call perspective within um, art. So to create that, one of the rules that we have as artists is we have this thing called a vanishing point. And this is good for if we're doing something like a road that goes into a distance, and you'll see that the road is bigger here. And then as it gets further away towards this vanishing point, so this is a horizon line, that's where the sky meets the land, uh, you can see that it eventually vanishes. And we're gonna be doing something very similar to that today, but this time, uh, rather than a road into a distance, we're gonna be doing circles that we're gonna join up, and they're gonna look like tubes that are coming towards the viewer. So I have two pieces of paper here with me today. I've got uh, this one, which is gonna be my final outcome, and I've got one here just to show you a few things and talk you through how this works. Just rough circles, don't worry if you're not so good at drawing circles, sometimes you have to go around a few times like that. And the idea is, is the closer to the uh, vanishing point, the smaller the circles, and then if we get back here, we can go even bigger. Let's do a really big one. There, and maybe medium size one here. Okay, once we've arranged our circles around the vanishing point, we're then going to join lines all the way to that vanishing point. If you want to use a ruler for this bit, um, please do. I'm just gonna do it freehand. Uh, the main thing is is to make sure you go right to the edge of your circle if you go in slightly like this it will look like an ice cream cone so we don't want that okay i'm just going to finish these two and then i'll show you how to do the strongest kind of shading this is a good one to show because you can see here that it will probably just be hidden by the one in front. Okay, that is quite likely. If I draw another big circle here, that is absolutely fine. All you've got to do is just not draw over the one that's in front. Oops, there we go, a bit like that. Okay, there's three stages of shading which I'm gonna show you. The first one is where you just go from dark to light. This one will look okay. But I'd like a lot of you to try and aim to go a bit further than this. So that's step one. Step two, all right, have a go on this example here. This is number two. And this is where we are actually, if you see the shape of the circle, what we're actually doing is we are adding guidelines all the way down which has the same curve, and do this quite lightly, as that circular shape there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade in the direction of those circles. And we're gonna bring those marks into the center now. This is now more of a mid-tone. Change the paper around, the direction around if you find it easier, and um, like I just did there. And then we're going to then just do some really smooth, lighter shadings. And once you've got that in, you can then just finish it off and make it a little bit neater. There so I am, just going up and down now just to smooth it out. If you need to slightly, if you are doing this, do it very delicately, just smudge with your fingers and maybe neaten up that top edge like that. 
Just add a few more little curvy lines. So this is called um, creating shading using directional marks. Okay, this is where we're curving around and it'll help it look a lot more three dimensional. So you can see if we look at the first one, that's not too bad. This one's a lot stronger. I'm now gonna show you a third technique, um, which is for those who really wanna challenge themselves today. Okay, on this one, we're gonna do the same as stage two, which I will do nice and quickly. And then we are going to go and try and make the tube look hollow. So for this, we can start by just drawing a rim that goes all the way around. Like that. And like I said, let's do stage two. It's going to come from the center away from that vanishing point um, a very light one so you can't see it on this area but you'll be able to see it in this section which is going to be the inside of the tube and then what we're going to do is we're going to work out the direction of the light so the light is coming this direction a shadow on this side which means in the inside of the tube the shadow is going to be in this half here the lights maybe going to clip this bit so we're going to start really small circles and we're looking at that edge of that tube there and we're, we're kind of making those same curves and then we're heading in towards that center. So imagine these circles are going downwards. So a little circle there and then these shapes are gonna come in. There are our guidelines now, okay? Um, I'm gonna lighten the ones on this side ever so slightly. I can just about make them out just to help me out there. In the inside here, inside of the tube. This is going to be very dark because it's further into the tunnel or the tube. I'm then going to go around, bearing in mind that this area I want darker. One way to remember is it's going to be opposite to that side. So that side is dark, so then this side is going to be the dark side for us here. And we're just going to go around it's a bit of a complicated one. This is this is why I've said this is for those who really want to challenge themselves. Um, the inside of the tube as well, remember, the further in, the darker it goes as well. So I'm just going to bring those tones. And then just curl around lightly on this section here, just to give it that 3D feel. But it will be a lot lighter. Okay. There we go. So that is how to do the number three stage tube. So now I'm ready to get going with my actual final result. So let's get going. Thank you. 
then we are done. It's just a matter of rubbing out any guidelines, any fingerprints, any smudges, and then all is good. It's quite tricky, but give it a go, see how you get on. Just something else to consider as well. If you want to, you can always draw a line and make the paper size a bit smaller and cut around the design. So you'd cut along the new paper line around the shape. And what you will do is you'll end up creating a real 3D illusion where it looks like it's coming off the page. So I'll just demonstrate that now as well. There we go, all complete. Please send me your outcomes, I'd love to see them. Best of luck.